Hey, welcome to Katie Did Rocks. Today we're going to look at a new digital microscope from Andenstar. I'm pretty excited. I got uh, a message in my mail asking me if I would be interested in reviewing a digital microscope that has a holder and a screen. It is from Andenstar digital microscope with HD imaging. I thought maybe this would be good for looking at opals and Jim is also talking about maybe learning how to do faceting and I thought it might be good for that too. So let's see what we have. Huh. This thing kind of looks like a gun, like a ray gun from the future. Pew, pew, pew. I wonder what it does. Look at all those buttons. Start pressing. These are all the cords that come with it. Plus a handy little strap. Oh, there's the card. Jim's going to help me unpack this because it's too hard to do one-handed. Besides, he likes it. This is a slide holder. This thing comes with some slides we can look at. We'll check them out later. Good grief. Look at all this stuff. And this cap. can't tell if these are Those lights. Are lights. Feels like uh, all aluminum. Feels lightweight, but it's quite sturdy. This needs to plug into something for the power supply. Oh, look at that. So it's USB only? Yes. Must plug into here. This is a screen. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to open it. And then rotates. Okay. Just, oh, it's got a screen protector on it. According to the picture, this aluminum thing is above this silver ring. So that should do the trick. Adjust the object distance within a range of 3.5 to 10.5 centimeters. Let's look at a crystal. Well, let's do, but first. There must be some sort of a connector. This comes out. I can figure out how. I should just peel out. There we go. Where'd that memory card go? Here it is. 32 gigabytes. Enormous. It isn't really adequate. We can lock it in place. Look at that. This is going to be so great for looking at opals and agate inclusions. This is really neat. I decided to put some salt crystals underneath there because the quartz crystals were rather large. And this is just standard table salt. You can maybe see it. Nope, you probably can't because it's underneath there. But it's very small crystals and they ended up looking like cubes on the screen. So that's pretty cool. The setup came with these slides. So we're going to see if we can use the slide stand and see what we can see. This is a pine stem. So it must just go on there like that. That's so pretty. I can't believe that has blown up like that. Looks like some kind of abstract painting. That's what an onion looks like. This is an epidermis of an onion, and I feel like you can see this, literally can see the cells in that, so that's pretty darn cool. And they're so tiny. This is the photograph that the Andon star took of the onion skin. Pretty neat. Yes, we have. Honeybee wing. Ooh, that'll be cool. That looks odd. Looks like a, a wire. 
Looks like we were looking at something else. There is the honeybee wing. Here's the honeybee worker leg. Oh, we're gonna have to go up. Musca domestica compound eye loading. How about if we look that up and figure out what it is? I'm betting it's a fly. All right, now let's take a look at some rocks. That's what we all really want to see anyway. This is an Arizona fire agate. And you can see by the size of my fingers that it's blown up quite a bit. And you can really see the colors better under the microscope here. Here's another fire agate. And it's got some really nice little nubbly bubbly botryoidals in it. I really, really like the way this looks under the microscope. You can see them with the naked eye, but they look so much cooler when they're up close like this. Here's another fire agate. One great thing about this is that it looks makes your finds look absolutely stupendously big. You can really see the fire in the middle there. Oh ho ho, it's time for some opal. This is Ethiopian opal that I bought at the Tucson Gem Show, and it is so pretty. It's pretty even to the naked eye, but you get it up close like this and just look at the flash. It's everywhere. So incredibly pretty. Speaking of opals, let's take a look at some Australian boulder opal. This stuff is just so pretty. And you can't really tell how pretty it is until you get close up because it's just little tiny lines within the boulders. But look at the shine on this. Look at the greens and the blues and the glittery stuff down at the bottom. Time for some Mexican fire opal. Oof, look at the fire in this one. That is so beautiful. I can't wait to have this one cut. I imagine this tool will be good for evaluating stones for faceting as well. This is another Mexican fire opal. Looks totally different, but equally beautiful. Did somebody say fire? These Mexican fire opals are amazing. Look at the color in this thing. However, I can also see a lot of cracks in the material. So getting something good out of it is going to require a lot of extra effort. It's very interesting to me how different each of these are. These are all from the same batch of Mexican fire opal. And you can see it has some common color palettes, but in terms of how the rocks look, they're totally different. You can see there's a problem with the light reflecting on this one. This is a Lightning Ridge Black Opal that I polished. It's pretty messy looking. It still has wax on the back and it's got some sand still in it. But you can see that the, the light definitely makes a problem with reflecting the, on the cabochons. I think that this microscope is really intended to examine things like coins or do electrical soldering, but it works pretty well for raw rocks. Jim just brought me this tiny little faceted amethyst that somebody sent along with an order of some kind. And it's so tiny that uh, we thought we'd look at it under, under the microscope and see what the facets look like. I think it's really cool how it makes kind of a dark ring around the outside of it. Jim thinks that the faceting itself is not very impressive, but I think with something this small, that's about what you get. Here's a peek at the same stone with a white background. I think it makes the ridge around the outside stand out even more. And here you can see how big it actually is, because here's my fingers. This one is a piece of low-grade opal that I polished, and you can see it has cracks and it has sand in it, but it also has this pretty, pretty color. And so, while I won't use it for any fine jewelry, I still enjoy it a great deal. What kind of pattern do you suppose this would be called? Messy flowers in a field, maybe. Here's a piece that really should be an iris agate. It probably is if I polished it properly. You can see all these tight lines all the way around, and it really is just a pretty rock. 
here is that Montana agate that I think is probably an iris agate with some backlighting. Here is some natural angel wing verisite given to me by our friend Lapidary Dave. Isn't that cool? Look at those little blue pieces in there. I wasn't even aware those were in there. This is a piece of malachite. I think it's very interesting how very clear the scratches are on it when you get up this close. This sort of be a great tool for looking at cabochons if you want to just really, really make your cabochons perfect. I think it might drive me crazy though. Here is a piece of petrified wood, agatized wood actually, sent to me by a viewer. I believe this wood is from Hampton Butte, which I think is in Washington. Thanks for watching, and thanks to And and Star for sending me this cool new tool. If you want to look at it more, there's a link in the description below. This is Kate from Katie Did. Keep on doing.